When I was first learning to trade about 15 years ago, I remember signing up for this uh, in-person seminar where for the first time ever I heard about the moving averages, RSIs, MACD diversions and things like that. And I thought, wow, this is like the business, right? They really sounded like they knew what they were talking about. Unfortunately, very quickly, I realized that most of it has very little value in the real world. <laughs> now, luckily for me, pretty quickly, I came across order flow trading strategies. And uh, to be honest, I've never really looked back. And I wish that somebody sat me down at that time to tell me about certain performance metrics and numbers combinations to look out for <laughs> that can kind of make or break your trading approach. But there was this one thing from that seminar that I kept throughout my performance. Uh, professional trading career. And that's to keep my risk reward ratio in the positive. Even if, you know, they advise like a really unrealistic, very high risk reward ratio for intraday trading, which was five to seven times of what you risked. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dee and this is Market Stalkers. We are a small group of professional prop traders sharing our experiences and our mistakes as well in an effort to help your trading journey become ever so slightly easier. Not easy, because this is actually not easy at all, but just a little bit easier. Today I'm going to talk to you about a metric called risk of ruin and why me and some of my colleagues constantly bang on about risk models, reducing your size, having a positive risk reward ratio. <laughs> These ideas can be applied to any style of trading, but since we are futures day traders working for various prop firms, I will be using a combination of the numbers that have worked for us. And regardless of whether you're trading your own account or you're doing an online prop challenge trying to get funded, uh, this works both ways. Now, first off, what is risk of ruin? What does it mean? Risk of ruin is basically a probability of failure. It shows you how likely you are to lose a substantial amount of money uh, where you can basically no longer recover the trading capital if you were to keep trading with the same risk model for years on end. Without going like super deep into the whole trader techno babble, <laughs> just know that this metric performs something called the Monte Carlo simulation on the back end uh, using multiple inputs. So uh, in case of trading, you can uh, put in different things, but generally it's your accuracy, so your hit rate, uh, your average risk reward ratio, and your risk per trade. Risk of ruin is a rather simple way to do risk modeling. So something that we do when we create mechanical trading systems, right? Now, why does all of this matter? Well, because not only will it show you whether or not your approach is high risk and therefore quite likely to blow up if attempted over long periods of time, it will also give you an opportunity to kind of play around with these numbers so that you can have a roadmap to improving your future performance rather than just bumbling around for years on end and just crying, oh, it's not working. <laughs> but once you have that and once you have those numbers, uh, you can look at improving things like your entries, maybe even increasing your risk reward and even reducing your trading activities in an effort to increase your hit rate. So we're going to be looking for quality over quantity of trades, okay? Now, if you go to one of our partner prop firms, you can remove the risk to your own savings by getting funded. Technically, you can have zero cash in your bank account, and if you do have profits in your prop trading account, you can get a payout. You don't need savings, you don't need startup capital. The only cost to you at that point will be the comparatively very small cost for the assessment challenge versus, of course, the amount of money that it would otherwise take you to fund yourself. And then that has, for a lot of people, that has a limit, right? Because most people, you know, let's face it, don't have an endless pot of cash hiding somewhere under your mattress. <laughs> but clearly, in order to even get there, there is a rather long journey to actually master this skill of day trading, to master risk, to master uh, market mechanics, and to understand contextually exactly what the market narrative is on that particular day. So how do we do that? Well, you need to start by looking at something like risk of ruin and looking at your previous performance numbers to see whether you have a statistically viable approach at all. One thing that I see over and over, especially on my coaching side, is that people trade with way too much size, but they also trade with ridiculously low profit ratio. So when you combine that with lack of confidence and lower accuracy, then you have that negative risk reward that will mean that your risk of ruin is actually sky high. You're basically bound to fail. That's why 
people perceive trading as something being really difficult, but really underneath that whole thing is just not really understanding the full effect that an entire risk model can have on your performance. So if you don't understand that and you are just kind of sitting down and not really looking at your data, not understanding what you're looking at, never mind a 100% chance of losing the account, you're gonna have like 19,000% chance of blowing up. So this process needs to set aside any kind of beginner's luck. If you are somebody who's only been trading for like a few months, just know that each and every one of us here has had like a moment where they started trading and they won some trades and thought, hey, this is easy, right? Only to find out very quickly that maintaining that <laughs> over long periods of time is so much harder than you initially thought it would be. Now risk of ruin as a metric will like shoot up. And especially if you still don't know where your edge is and you just kind of keep doing 15 to 30 trades a day, grasshoppering all over the place, in and out of trades, changing one system to the next, to the next, and never really sitting down to master any one concept on one product for about like nine months to a year before adding another product into the mix. So be very careful doing that, okay? Scale back, size down, and let's start from the beginning. So how do you find your risk of ruin? Something that pertains to your personal results. And how do you use this to see which part of your current approach is putting a wrench in the works towards you fulfilling your dream of making money as a trader? Now, of course, you are going to need some trading data, right? Now, I'm not talking about market data, I'm talking about your own trades. If you don't have at least 100 trades that you've done over three months minimum, then you probably don't have a sample size that is even remotely meaningful enough to derive useful data, okay? But if you have that, you can go to literally any journaling software. I personally like to use Edgewonk. Um, I'll put a link somewhere here so you can check that out. But literally like any trading platform these days will give you some basic stats. Now the second thing that you're gonna need is your risk of ruin calculator. You can find these like online very easily. Just go to Google, um, type in risk of ruin calculator. Um, but literally any will do. Some of them are a little bit simpler than this one input some numbers so that I can show you this practically how it all works. The first thing that you're gonna need is your accuracy percentage. Now my accuracy at the moment, if I take my numbers and I'm looking at them, um, they, it's, it's kind of pretty high, which is not very realistic, right? But let's put in um, something quite achievable. Let's put uh, 45% very achievable, even for a beginner who is making loads of ex execution mistakes or you're missing a lot of trading opportunities, you can still achieve 45% accuracy. Next thing is your average win and your average loss. Now, this is nothing more but the payout um, ratio, risk reward ratio, right? It's just that here they prefer to take uh, these two values and then they can't divide them in the calculator. So let's again put something that's gonna give us like, uh, let's say a one-to-one -one, um, risk reward ratio. Risk per trade. Let's start with, uh, with just 1%. Then we have loss level, uh, which is uh, basically at which point would you consider that, that the account is done? It's ruined, right? So let's put, you know, a horrible number of 90%. So you lose 90% and you're done. And number of trades, let's go 100 trades, right? Calculate. Hmm. So, risk of ruin. I mean, what is this number even? Like, this is like 6 billion, 9, 7, 4. Yeah, so it's not good. That means if you keep doing this, so 45% accuracy, one-to-one, -one, and you're using 1% risk per trade, like a good trader, you're gonna lose. So something needs to change. Something in this combination of numbers is not a statistically viable system. So the first thing that we're gonna do, let's change this to 50%, the accuracy. So you've improved your accuracy, woohoo. So now your risk of ruin is not like in the billions, but it's still 100%. That's still no good. <laughs> What gives, like what needs to happen here in order for you to get a statistically viable system? Let's start reducing the size. Let's see whether that makes any difference to the numbers. No, it makes zero difference. So even if you start using a really small amount of risk, over time, this is a losing system. You run it long enough, you will have risk of ruin, 
100%. Now let's leave the initial accuracy at 45% and let's increase the payout ratio, so profit factor, to 1.2. So now for every 100 bucks that you lose, you're going to be winning 120 bucks, right? So that's a 1.2 risk reward ratio. Everything else remains the same. So let's run the numbers. Hmm, risk of ruin has gone up now. So what the hell? Like I, ha I have a positive risk reward, right? I have like 120 bucks per every 100 that I lose. Why is this not working? What's happening? Well, it's because you need to find a combination of the win rate and your profit factor, okay? And now let's just increase this payout, the, the average win, to 1.4. So just slightly bigger. Let's see what happens. Hmm, interesting. So you've eliminated your risk of drawdown because you're still using 1% per trade, but now you've eliminated your risk of ruin as well. In my methodology, I always advise people to start using a two to one risk reward as a default on their setups. But if you've watched any of my trading sessions here on YouTube that I do, and like I do them every day for members, um, you may have noticed that a lot of my trades are 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, 1 1.4, some of them. Um, and this is why, because you don't need to keep having two to ones all the time to have a profitable system at all. So all you need is to have a statistically viable target that is not going to give you a losing, bleeding account over a number of years. And where is that cutoff point? Well, it's 120, right? So at 120, your risk of ruin is still really high, over 400%. But at 125, which is only 1.25 profit factor, your risk of ruin falls down to about 17%. Now remember, we're still working with very low accuracy here, like 45%. So you don't need a crazy high accuracy. And then from 130, so 1.3, your risk of ruin nearly falls to zero, but there's still a little bit of risk of ruin. And then at 140, that becomes a viable system. Now, why do I advise two to one? Well, it's because if your accuracy falls below a certain number, your risk of ruin is gonna go up again. Look at it, it's 18,000% now. <laughs> and all I've done here is to reduce the win rate 5%, from 45 down to 40. And most of our market stalkers actually sit at about a win rate of 52%. So again, your risk of drawdown, risk of ruin is zero. So now, even if you increase your size, you know, I've told you in my prop accounts, I use four and 5% per position in relation to the available drawdown. Um, so even if you increase the risk per trade to four, your risk of ruin is still non-existent because this is a, a statistically viable system, right? It's robust. There's no amount of combination that might happen that will cause you to go into a horrendous drawdown and completely blow your account. So what I want you to do now is to take your data and then take your numbers and run them through the calculator. And I want you to take the data from different periods as well, not just taking like overall stats, which is something you should start with, but then go back to the previous month, then go back to the two months before, and if you have enough data, go back to January, February, you know, different seasonalities and see how you did. You might have like an epiphany, an aha moment, and then you'll also have a roadmap on what part of your approach actually needs work. That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please press the like button and consider leaving a comment down below because it massively helps to get some better exposure to the YouTube algorithm. If you are interested in improving your trading skills and your overall process of coming up with a trading setup, it might be useful to check out one of my free look trading sessions right here.